Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 30th of December. Indian capital New Delhi reels under severe cold, dense fog reduces visibility. Corruption watchdog NAB should be abolished, says Pakistan's Bilawal Bhutto. And Taliban ruling council reportedly ready for ceasefire with US. And now for all the details. Dense fog hovering over Indian capital New Delhi and neighboring region on Monday morning reduced visibility, delayed trains and flights causing inconvenience to locals and passengers. A thick blanket of fog engulfed Indian capital New Delhi and the national capital region on Monday morning, resulting in low visibility causing inconvenience to residents. As many as 30 trains were running late due to low visibility in the Northern Railway region and due to bad weather, flight operations at the New Delhi airport were adversely affected. Residents, including students who stepped out to go to work or school, were seen wrapped in several layers of clothing to protect themselves from the bone-chilling cold. दिल्ली में बहुत दिनों बाद ये ठंड पड़ रही है इतनी जो कि हम इसको इतने सारे कपड़े पहन के यहाँ पे आए हुए हैं और स्टैंड पे बस लेकिन कि खड़े हैं तो आसपास की चीजें दिख रही हैं दूर की चीज नहीं दिख रही बिल्कुल। Meanwhile, as temperatures in northern parts of the Indian subcontinent skirting the Himalayan foothills has dipped drastically, parts of iconic Dal Lake in Indian Kashmir were seen partially frozen on Sunday. Portion of the lake's surface were seen covered with a thick blanket of ice, affecting the movement of local boats known as shikaras. Abar se jo log aate hain, unme waha aisa hai nahi. Ye jo baraf ya pani jamna, wo unko khish lata hai yaha, kyunki wo dekhte hain yaha aisa hai Kashmir ka nazara. Kashmir yehi hai. The Dal Lake, according to residents, becomes a major tourist attraction in winters as visitors get to enjoy an uncommon side of the frozen lake along with the scenic beauty of the valley. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday launched a Twitter campaign in support of the Citizenship Amendment Act, which has triggered protests in parts of the country since it was passed earlier this month. The Prime Minister has maintained the religion-based law is about giving citizenship to persecuted refugees and not about taking anyone's citizenship away. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday launched a Twitter campaign in support of the Citizenship Amendment Act 2019, which has triggered protests in parts of the country. PM Modi's official website tweeted, that the Citizenship Amendment Act, or CAA, is about giving citizenship to persecuted refugees and not about taking anyone's citizenship away. Earlier, members of the Indian diaspora in the U.S. on Sunday held events at the Times Square in New York and in California to show support for the CAA and dispel the misinformation surrounding it, which they said have led to protests in parts of India over fears that it is anti-Muslim. The Citizenship Amendment Act paves way to Indian citizenship to non-Muslims who entered India before 2015 after facing religious persecution in Muslim-majority Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan. This is only to protect our own citizens and to take out all the non-citizens from our country out and bring back the citizens from the neighboring countries which are persecuted minorities of those countries bring back to India. Meanwhile, protests have continued in parts of India against the Citizenship Amendment Act since December 11 when it was passed. 
Critics say the law discriminates against Muslims and undermines India's secular constitution. They question why the law does not include Muslims fleeing neighboring Sri Lanka and Myanmar, where they are a minority. Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has termed the National Accountability Bureau or NAB a farce and said the corruption watchdog should be abolished. He said the recent promulgation of the NAB ordinance shows the government's biased efforts. Pakistan People's Party or PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has said the recent promulgation of the National Accountability Bureau or NAB ordinance is a tactic admission by the government that the corruption watchdog should be abolished and called it to end this farce. Terming it as a clearly biased effort by the government, Bilawal said on Twitter on Sunday that the ordinance was proof that the government agrees with former President Asif Ali Zardari that NAB and the economy cannot run together. The federal cabinet on Friday gave its approval to the NAB ordinance 2019. Under the ordinance, NAB will no longer be allowed to take action against government employees and businessmen, reports suggest. The proposed ordinance states that NAB will now only be able to pursue corruption cases of only rupees 500 million and more. If the accountability watchdog cannot complete an investigation against a suspect within three months, the accused will be entitled to bail. More news from Pakistan. Pakistan is facing gas outages as demand exceeded supply following an abrupt drop in temperature in parts of the country. Residents in Karachi city complained that shortage of gas in recent weeks has affected their business and made living harder in harsh winters. Residents in Pakistan's Karachi city complained of a shortage of gas in recent weeks that has affected their business and made living harder in harsh winters. Apart from frequent electricity breakdowns to acute load shedding, gas crisis has only worsened their lives in one way or another. This shortfall has also affected CNG sector. Many businesses are feeling the pressure resulting in many hotels shutting down due to the crisis locals blamed. They allege that Prime Minister Imran Khan's government or previous governments have done nothing to solve the prolonging issue. By gas ka to aisa matla hai, ye to char maaj mahine hai, hamaay paas gas hi nahi rehegi. Aisa mein appeal apna hoi aayega. Aisa mein kuch fayda nahi hai government ka bhi. Koi government aagai, isne gas na kisi ne bhi kaam nahi kiya. Imran Khan le lo, Nawaz Shahib le lo, Dardai le lo, kisi ne hi kaam nahi kiya gas ka. Amaar nuksaan kya hai, bhaiyan, hadaar pe ki hum LP, bada so, pandha so, doha daar ki LP le ke aate hai. Kuch fayda nahi hai bhaiyan. جھوٹ نہیں بولا بھائی جان اللہ کو نازل رہا گیس سے ہم لوگ بہت پریشان ہیں ہوتل والے آتے تو ہوتل بن ہو گئے سر گزارہ نہیں ہوتا سلنڈر پر روٹی بہت مہنگی کرنی پڑے گی ابھی تو بہت سستی روٹی دے رہے ہیں ابھی روٹی سر بارہ روپے کی پندرہ بیس روپے کی روٹی ہو جائے گی اگر گیس نہیں آیا بہت پریشانی ہو رہی ہے The growing demand for gas has a history in Pakistan In the past decade the consumer base increased and many industries, including automobile, switched from oil to gas. However, the policy makers failed to gauge its impact on the long-term balance between supply and demand. In East from Afghanistan, the Taliban's ruling council has agreed to a temporary ceasefire in Afghanistan, providing a window in which a peace agreement with the United States can be signed, media reports said on Sunday. The Taliban's ruling council has agreed to temporary ceasefire in Afghanistan, reports suggested on Sunday. According to media reports, the agreement has been finalized as a draft after around 10 rounds of talks between the United States and the Taliban. Washington had demanded the ceasefire before any peace agreement could be signed, which would allow U.S. troops to leave Afghanistan for the first time in 18 years, America's longest military engagement. Peace talks were suspended in September by U.S. President Donald Trump after a surge in violence in Afghan capital Kabul killed an American soldier. Talks then resumed after Trump made a surprise visit to Afghanistan at the end of November, announcing that the Taliban were ready to talk and agree to a reduction in violence. However, the group has continued attacks. 
in the latest again an american soldier was killed in combat in northern afghanistan sri lankan president gotabaya rajapaksa has said that the 19th amendment to the constitution has been a major obstacle to state governance and stressed the need for a strong parliament to remove the legislation the legislation envisages the dilution of many power of executive presidency Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa said the 19th amendment to the constitution has been a major obstacle to state governance and stressed the need for a strong parliament to remove the legislation. Gotabaya while addressing a meeting with heads of local government institutions at his residence on Sunday said 19th amendment is the key factor to fulfilling the aspirations of the people. Sri Lankan parliament adopted the legislation in 2015 which envisages the dilution of many parts of executive presidency. that had been in force since 1978 and in turn empower parliament the amendment was a result of promise made by then president maithripala srisena leading up to the 2015 presidential election and was to repeal the 18th amendment which gave the president extreme powers in an environment friendly move a factory in india's haryana province has started manufacturing biodegradable shoes which are made of organic raw materials like husks and sugar cane the company says manufacturing shoes that decompose in 5 years is an attempt to limit environmental damage a factory in panchkula city of india's northern haryana province is manufacturing shoes using organic raw materials to aid nature The company called Dresh Shoes claims that the shoes made by it are biodegradable and decompose in 5 years. An official from the manufacturing company said the concept behind the decomposable shoes is trying to aid the environment and the raw materials used come from plants. So we have made shoes now which are having 82% bio content which is plant based. They are based on eucalyptus they based on sugarcane they based on castor beans we are also working on converting the husk of rice or wheat to fiber according to dress shoes manufacturing the organic shoes the decompose in 5 years is an attempt to limit environmental damage and it would widen its accounting for the cost of its air pollution greenhouse gases waste land and water use People in India's northern Ladakh region recently marked the beginning of the Ladakhi New Year Losar. Monks and artists presented cultural performances at a Buddhist temple in Leh city which were followed by feasting. Hundreds of people including Buddhist monks, devotees and tourists marked the beginning of Ladakhi New Year called Losar in India's cold desert region of Ladakh. Locals in large numbers gathered at the Chokang Vihara Buddhist Temple in Leh and prayed for happiness and prosperity which was followed by feasting. Buddhist monks and artists sported their ethnic attires including mask and headgears and performed traditional dances during the celebrations. Monks also hosted religious prayer flags, presented symbolic meals and offerings to the deities and performed rituals with full adoration. आज का ये जो लद्दाखी लोसर है ये आ, हमारा पहला लोसर है लद्दाख को यूटी मिलने के बाद तो इसको हम बड़े हर्ष उल्लास के साथ आज इस लोसर को मना रहे हैं ये पूरे लद्दाख में बहुत ही हर्ष उल्लास के साथ मनाया जाता है दिस ईयर लोसर इज वेरी स्पेशल फॉर लद्दाख एज द रीजन इज सेलिब्रेटिंग द फेस्टिवल एज यूनियन टेरिटरी फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम Ladakh was a region of India's northern province of Jammu and Kashmir until August 2019 when the parliament passed an act by which Ladakh became a union territory on 31st October 2019. Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. It's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. 
breaking news and views from India.